Hey guys, so today I've decided I'm going to take you on a behind the scenes of a shoot with my friend Stefan Kotas. Maybe you know him. If not, you can watch this short video that I made about him two years ago. And what Stefan does is one of the oldest photography techniques in the world called the wet plate collodion process. And he is most likely the only person in Indonesia who has successfully managed to replicate this technique in Indonesia. And as I said, today I'm going to take you on a shoot day with him. Today I'm going to be shooting on my Kinefinity Mavo LF Mark II and I'm going to be running the setup handheld, but I'm also going to be testing this new product that I just got sent, which is a, it's like a cine saddle from a company called Focusrite. Uh, this one is a, it's a red bag basically, not a cine saddle, but a red bag. And so I'm going to be testing it today uh, in order to find out if I like using it and if I think this is a good tool to have on set, especially as a documentary filmmaker. How do you decide on the framing? and on the things that you want to shoot. Yeah, and this frame I already have in my mind for since last time I was here. I want to shoot like a panorama, three images, uh, make into one, uh, one image, like a mosaic of uh, three plates to get this temple with the reflection in the water. So it's a kind of tall image and just deciding now if I should wait for the light to come up, the sun, or to shoot one frame uh, just in a shadow. But plate is not very uh, high contrast uh, film. So if we have very soft light like shadow, shadow light like this, it's uh, losing even more contrast. So I usually like harder light to get, to get more definition and more high contrast image. So Stefan has set up the camera and we are waiting now for the sun to come out and start touching the temple. As you can see, it's almost touching it, uh, but basically we will only have an hour window to do all three photos, which he talked about. It's kind of a collage photo with the collodion process, which is very difficult and uh, it requires a lot of precision with lighting, with composition and also with timing. I'm shooting on Canon FD lenses today, 24 f2.8, 50 millimeter uh, 1.4. And then I've also used this iFootage uh, spider crab arm to attach my GoPro to the camera. So you can have an interesting angle when I'm filming and I can also talk to you while I'm filming. Uh, we'll see how it's gonna look. So until now, everything has been very calm. We've been waiting, but the sun has finally come and the things are gonna get a little more hectic because as I said, this is a very time sensitive process. And so Stefan's gonna start pouring the and we start taking some photos. like these guys running from one side to another. It's still too dark. A little bit more detail on the temple. So I think I'll try one more exposure in this frame. This is my portable dark room. When we shoot with wet plate, we need a dark room on the side because we're developing sensitizing on the field. So there's two parts of it because some, uh, some of the process we need to do under the safe light in the dark room. And some of the process it actually is not necessary to do. So 
This is my pouring station. This is where I pour in collodion on the plate. It's the first step of the process. I pour the collodion on a metal plate like that. That I can do under normal light. And then I will come to the dark room and I will, I will put the plate into the silver. That's the sensitizing process. And when I take the plate out of the silver, it's already sensitized. It, it reacts on the light. So it needs to be done in the dark room under the safe light. I will put the plate into the uh, into the plate holder, take it to the camera, expose it in the camera, bring it back to the dark room. Under the safe light, we do developing. We put it with the developer, and after developing, the image, uh, the chemicals don't react on light anymore. So I will come out again and do the fixing process here. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Yeah. Okay, coming up. Stop. Five seconds is good. First picture of the mosaic, the upper part of the temple, the roof. There's a little bit of uh, canopy of uh, trees around it. It's good. I got. I wanted to get the carvings, the wooden carvings on the temple. The light, the sun nicely hits it. So we got it on the second try. And now we're gonna do the middle part of the image. So guys, when you're shooting documentary, super important to capture the environment as well. And whether that means wide shot, establishing shots or details, and try to look for interesting things. For example, now I just found these beautiful reflections on the water with the fishes coming out and feeding on, I don't know if it's insect or something. They creating these nice circles. And to me, this is just something that speaks to me. Uh, and so, when it speaks to me, I decide to shoot it. Guys, I didn't notice that I have a headlamp the whole time. Uh, anyway, so we've been shooting for about hour and a half, for two hours. And as you can see, everything's moving really fast once you start shooting because... Ah, wow, the sounds of the jungle. Because the light is changing so fast. So there's a huge, huge importance on precision, on timing. And it's just such an art form. You know, I, I really admire Stefan because he really is someone who's trying to master this craft and it, that requires a lot of time. I think he's been doing this for seven, eight years and before he did digital photography for 10. So he has about 20 years of photography experience and he is still trying to master this in order to be able to create, you know, consistently great images. Yeah, this one looks really good. Let's see after fixing it, eh? but it's promising. I need a sponsor for a camera bag. <laughs> you see my camera bag. We make it happen. <laughs> my big project I have on my mind, uh, the next one is uh, shooting uh, old, old uh, Java Hindu temples in Java, the old Chandi Chandi from, uh, from the time when there was uh, Hinduism in, uh, in Java, which is like eight, nine, ten 10th century. And a lot of old temples there, and they have been shot before, previously in 19th century by the by the colonial government, by Dutch government, and on this technique, that was the, one of the first objects that they shoot, uh, 1850, 1860, when they bring when the photography was born and what plate collodion photography was invented. Uh, one of the first objects that they were shooting was the architectural, uh, I mean, uh, archaeological uh, objects like. Uh, Prambanan, Borobudur, and on the old, old temples. So I would like to redo it after 100, uh, 160 years uh, on the same medium. That's that's my next big project I want to do. Doing 
30 second exposure now. I'm just guessing, I'm not sure. But it's, it's very dark here, a lot of shadow. I don't have so much experience with this kind of dark, uh, dark places. So I'm just guessing the exposure to be 30 seconds. The development was a little bit slow, so it means it was a little bit underexposed, but I took longer with the development, so we we got a, uh, you know, in wet plate, when you underexpose, you can still do longer development and you can still get a pretty good exposure. And I think that's what happened today. See, after fixing. So we have a few, few nice images today. Dragon temple. The three image mosaic is not perfect because there was a mistake with my camera. Uh, the view, the viewfinder that I have actually, it doesn't show the five by seven size as I thought. It's a little bit bigger, so the connection of the image is not precise. I didn't know that actually because I hardly ever shoot the small size, so I need to fix that and maybe we'll try again. But yeah, it's always good experience on the field. My fourth time going with the portable darkroom, and every time you learn something new. My team is working great. And yeah, just keep learning. So you heard it guys, we're done for today. And before I end the video, two things. First of all, the red bag, uh, really, really comfortable, really good. I've absolutely loved using it. I was shooting handheld and this comes in so handy because you can just put your camera on it, you know, you get it more stable and you can have it around your neck, you can have it around your shoulder. It has few pockets, so you can also put some stuff inside. Uh, but I'll probably do a bigger review of this product uh, maybe next week or the week after. Second, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this new experimental format of the video. I thought that I'm going to do something different because I've been lately feeling quite stuck with the tutorials and I feel like they are great, but they are not, uh, they're not helping me to improve as a filmmaker. And so I would like to shoot as much as I can to practice the craft of filmmaking and storytelling and through doing projects like this, you know, one day, two days projects with friends, I can actually do it. So my new philosophy is to practice more and bring you with me to do behind the scenes and then some breakdowns of the films that I create. This is obviously not gonna be a short film, this is just a YouTube video, but I have few things uh, prepared for the next month. So stay tuned, subscribe, and as always, no, actually I'm not gonna see you next Tuesday, because I think I'm going to reduce the amount of uploads and I'm going to upload maybe three to two times a month, but much higher quality videos. So see you in two weeks. Peace.